Hello everyone, welcome to Cockney Herbs Coding Class. Is this thing on? Okay. <laughs> so, I do Vex Robotics, and we wanted a way to be able to record and then play back any movement we want with our robot, and then use it for, for example, the autonomous section of the Vex game. So, there was one tutorial on YouTube, which I did not follow, but it did give me the inspiration for this video. So, their strategy was to get the motor velocities using the Pros API, and then simply write those into a giant C++ file that repeatedly calls the function to change the motor velocity with those velocities. And then they take that file, put it on their computer, compile it, and then they have a program. But this is really stupid for obvious reasons, because you end up with a giant 10,000 line C++ file that's just got all the values in it. So instead, I've devised a fairly simple system that is easily extensible for different motor configurations, and it writes the data directly from RAM into a file, and then loads that raw data out of the file back into RAM. So it's a bit unsafe, but as long as you make sure that you're not trying to load in stuff that isn't supposed to be loaded in, it'll work fine. So I'm going to make a new header file in the include directory, and this is a fake prose project. There's not actually stuff here, because I'm just going to be showing you the parts that you actually need to modify. So in include, make replay.h, or whatever you want to call it, I'm calling it replay.h, then in main.c, you should add an include. Include replay.h. Okay. Now here we'll do type def struct double wheels four. So this means we're making an array with four elements and it is a double which is a float but twice as precise in case you didn't know that. Oh this should not be a comma, this should be a semicolon. My JavaScript brain is on. And then double prong because our robot has four wheels so four wheels and a prong, but if your robot has different motor configurations, you can make this struct, you know, use the values that correspond to the motors that you have. And then int last. And you can make this a boolean as well if you want. It doesn't really matter. And then do replay step like that. And the reason we need to have this last thing is because, oh, you're not supposed to put, oh no, I didn't put a semicolon at the end of that. Whoops. The reason you have to have this last thing is because I wanted to make it possible to have the arrays be of any length and then just being able to read and write the files of different sizes from the disk and the easiest way to do that is to just put on every single element of the array a value saying whether or not it is the last one which is really stupid and janky but it works so I'm going with it. And then a replay is simply an array of these replay steps, so it's really easy to build one. So I'm going to write a file, uh, whoops. So make a function void write underscore replay, because this is really where the bulk of the stuff happens. Figuring out how to read and write that struct took me an embarrassingly long time, but hopefully that will not be the case for you. So two parameters, replay step step so it is a pointer to a array of replay steps and then char star <laughs> file name that's a string and then we'll do file star f equals f open file name comma wb that means you can write to the file and then this is very straightforward for replay step asterisk i equals step i dash greater than last I think you have to have these actually be connected I'm not 100% sure 
is not one i plus plus so you see this comes into play we don't tell it how big the replay step is or how big the replay is all we do is just check in this for loop if it's the last one and if it is then we stop and the reason you can do i plus plus here is because in c an array is just a pointer to its first element so if you add one to that pointer you're moving forward by its length it's pretty cool and then you do f right i and then you do size size of replay step so we are writing this step we're writing this much data and then one i forgot what that parameter does and then f that's the file that we're writing to that we have opened up here and then at the end you just do f close f and we're done now loading in the replays is unfortunately it's a tiny bit less straightforward but still not that complex and it's also unfortunately if you edit this configuration you also have to change this function but it's not a huge deal it's just a C moment so replay step star read underscore replay so it'll return an array of these replay steps which is perfect because you'll want to read and write them and get the same data back and then the one parameter it takes is char file name so again a string what file name to read from pretty straightforward and then this line here is literally the same as this one and then we need to figure out the size of the file so we do fseek f0 seek end so it seeks to the end of the file and then we do size underscore t size equals f tell f which tells you what position in the file you are and since we've seeked to the end we know that's the end position or in other words the size of the file and then we do f seek f zero seek set which takes us back to the beginning of the file pretty cool now that we figured out the size we can allocate the correct amount of ram to load in the replay so we just do replay step asterisk replay equals malloc size so again we've allocated that size into a replay and it's a pointer and then we need to make another replay step but this one is not a pointer because it's only one of them current step and yeah don't give it any value because that'd be weird and then int i equals zero because we're doing a wall loop but we're going to use it like a for loop because of stuff anyway while f read and then in parentheses here and current step so we're passing it a pointer to this replay step we've created which is going to be updated you know every time because this is going to be a while loop comma size of replay step so what we're doing is we are loading in from the file and the last parameters are one comma f oh yeah also this wb should be rb up here not wb we are loading into this variable this much data from this file so essentially we're going to repeatedly load in one step to this variable and then we are going to add the value of that into this array that we've created and then the reason this is a while loop is because look how convenient this is this will return a falsy value if we've reached the end of the file so then we just need to do and this is this is the unfortunate part we have to manually set each of these values so if you modify you know how your motors are laid out you also have to change this so replay i dot prong equals current step i dot prong because we've loaded this into here i wonder if you could do some wacky like memory stuff where you 
copy the value of current step into this array. I don't know how you do that. If you do know how to do that, leave a comment because that'd be pretty cool. And then you do replay i dot last equals one. And so basically on each step we're going to say this step is the last step. And then we're going to say the previous step is not the last step. That way when we actually reach the last step this loop will exit and the only step that will be having this value be one is the actual last step because it doesn't have a step after it to set its value to zero. And to do this all you have to do is if i is greater than zero because obviously there's no negative one index this isn't python replay i minus one like i just explained the previous index dot last equals zero and then we're going to loop through the wheels so int i i equals zero you could use i j k if you want i don't care I prefer just adding an extra i at the end of it so it's longer and longer. Less than 4, i i plus plus. And then all you have to do is do replay i dot wheels i i equals current step dot wheels i i. And then all you have to do at the end of the function is f close f to close the file and then finally return replay which is of course an array of replay steps. So now we've written code that can take an array of replay steps and write it to a file and then take a file and load it back into an array of replay steps. But of course the vital component of this all is the ability to create replays and play back replays Otherwise, you know, this is pointless. So let's start with playing back a replay that has already been written to a file. And I'm going to do it here from the autonomous section, but of course, if you want to put it in its own function or whatever, you are welcome to do that. So firstly, replay step star replay equals, oh, this should be, yeah, equals read replay and then slash usd slash rec. That's the file name I'm using, usd is the SD card that is plugged into the VEX brain, so you do need an SD card for this to work. And then rec is just the file name that I've chosen. Now we do for int i equals zero, replay i, that should be a y, dot last is not equal to one. So again, we need to know which step is the last one, otherwise this loop will continue forever. That's part of why this happens, and that is why I've chosen to do this, so that we can have the replays be as long or as short as we want without having to change stuff around. I++. plus plus. Then we just do for int ii equals zero, and you can space this out. I i is less than four. I plus plus. This is for the wheels. All we have to do is motor underscore move underscore velocity wheels I i. And as you can see here, the wheel ports are stored in this array here, comma. Replay I i. No, replay i, whoops, dot wheels, i i. So we are writing the velocity to each wheel. And then we can do the same thing for the prong. It's just motor underscore move velocity prong underscore port, comma, let's replay, no, replay i dot prong. Pretty simple. And then one last thing at the bottom of this for loop, delay 2. And that is because otherwise it'll just do it all at once and it won't work. And in the driver control you also have to do delay 2. So if you want your delay to be different for some reason the standard is to use 2 milliseconds but if you want it to be something else you have to also change it in the playback code. But 
There it is. That's the playback. And you should also stop all the motors at the end of it. But I'm not going to bother doing the code for that. Next, let's record a replay and write it to a file from the driver control code. So I'm just going to operate on the assumption that we have a Boolean called recording, which is set to false. And somewhere in the code, it is set to true, triggered by some sort of button press or whatever. I'm not going to deal with doing that. And then we do int replay step equals zero. And we will add to that every single time. And then we do replay step star replay equals malloc to allocate some RAM size of replay step multiplied by whatever amount of, of steps you want there to be. So for one minute of recording, it is 30,000 steps because, of course, we are delaying two milliseconds. So each step represents two milliseconds of time and it's basic division from there. One minute is 60,000 milliseconds, and we divide that by two. So now we have allocated one minute's worth of replay steps. And then I just realized all this should be in a while true all of this should be in a while true loop so now what we do is if recording for int i equals zero i is less than four we've done this a lot of times i plus plus replay replay step dot wheels i is equal to and here's the important part motor get actual velocity wheels i so now what we're doing is we're getting the actual velocity of that motor not whatever value we're actually sending it to sending to it but the velocity of the motor after it is turned on the ground and that way, when we set the velocity in this function, it'll be exactly the same and therefore more precise. And then we can do replay because we got that prong motor on ours. Again, you have to do this for however your motor configuration is. And then again, just do prong port. Now, if replay step is equal to 30,000 because that's how long we're recording for and you can put this in a variable if you like I'm just gonna do 30,000 then replay replay step dot last equals one so we're telling it it's the last one and then we can do Right, replay, replay, slash USD, that's the SD card, slash rec. So now we have written that replay to the SD card. And then we can just do recording equals false, false. And then at the very bottom, replay step plus plus and we're done we now record for one minute and then write to the SD card and stop recording so hopefully you found that useful and you try it out because it's it's pretty cool to be able to record and then see your robot do the exact thing you just did it's fun subscribe or whatever if you want and remember it's not gay if you can bench him